how we uh, explore the, the use of 3D printing on the desk. And I want you to know that this is not my work, this is a, a collaboration, this is a, a final result of uh, a collaborate, an international collaboration, collaboration actually. Um, and so we have the, the aim or the purpose for these is to uh, you know, give us a valid and reliable tool for assessing key sensor integration functions, right? Um, and, and so it, it tends to measure sensor perception, sensor re reactivity, postural, lock, ocular, bilateral integration and praxis in children from 3 to 12, right? And, but what I think is amazing on, on the easy test is that it's being designed to be worldwide available. And find something high. that you know you can you can have in the whole world, and you want to find objects that don't disappear off the market because you need to get that. Sound. They start to try to figure that out, and you can tell by the pictures that it was a boring process, right? Yeah. Um, so they start with cardboard, and and finally they get the first uh, the, the the first. Shapes printed out. Is uh, is he shame activity with them? Um, and and for you that are not familiar with 3D printing, um, I want to, to tell you a little bit what it is. So by definition, is a, a process of joining material, and it's not it's not need that you no know, you don't need to have um, unless said that is actually plastic because we have many materials like gold or steel or uh, Wood. There's a, lo a lot of materials that you can use for 3D printing, but the process is um, join ma material layer by layer to, you know, make objects. Um, so let me let me tell you, or let me show you actually how this works. So this is not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> but you see there's little holes in the shapes that there are, those holes are for uh, a magnet that will allow you to do this yeah so you have the shapes and the shapes don't you know you have a metal thing that you can put the shape there and it's more gets more organization to you when you're giving the test to the, to the, to the children actually in this test the children can hold the piece and, and feel it as a whole, a whole thing. And if you if you know the manual form perception of from the same, the, on the part two, children can really take the, the piece out. So I think this is a, a good advantage on, on this on this set. Uh, what people will need to figure out what works best for, for them. Um, but this is Stephen Stephen Shen organization. I think it's pretty cool. I'm not like this. I'm, I'm a little bit. But, but so in total right now we have. 101 pieces, and don't get scared because this this will you know this number will be reduced, and with this pilot testing that we are now uh, go going from. So and here one thing really interesting happened. So when I thought about this, I thought okay, they send me the, the files, and I go and find a printer nearby, and, and I he printed he printed the, the the files for me. But if that happens also in Croatia as well. Um, but not in Hong Kong, because Stephen said, you know, we, we have so many people, we need so many tests. I'm just buying my own 3D printer and I print it by myself, and he did. <laughs> so, so I wanted to, to, to talk about the process in, in two different ways. So if you can outsource, or you can just self-print, right? So what Stephen is doing. Um, and I, want, I don't want you to leave this session and think that, okay, uh, now I just actually to bring, to bring them out. Um, but if I thought that the outsourcing wasn't filling you know, the, the, the needs yet, yeah, and was was really hard to find this uh, special filament, tick glass on the on Hong Kong. Um, so you end up having a great cost, and, and so he decided to bring it by, by himself. Um, so it protects printers, and it is. And we we use this website. There's another website that you can use to find printers on your on your local area. Um, I tried different countries actually last night, and they were all working. So I could find a printer in Portugal. So I believe you can 
<laughs> find a bridge in it <laughs> anywhere in the world. Just hear Stephen's recommendation. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our office. Here is two 3D printer working. First of all, let me tell you about how we choose 3D printer. The 3D printers we choose are those FFF type 3D printer, which means that they are using a row of filament. So this is actually what turns out to be the shape. The problem of filaments will go for a tube into the nostril head. The nostril heads will then put the filament onto a platform to form shapes. The second thing is about putting into putting it in magnets into the shapes. Because in the test we need to put the shapes on a metal strip for easier administration so we will embed the magnet there as you can see in this print half out there is a hole in the middle of the shapes which is remember that blue thing that you saw on, on the back of the printer that was that's the plastic that becomes the shape so the most used is the PLA the poly lactic acid this is so OT, isn't it? <laughs> I never thought I was talking about this this stuff in the conference. But okay, so it's a beautiful uh, type of plastic, and so it's good for our world too. And but this is as as one inconvenient. It you can't really go in your mouth. So we were concerned about that. And so we found this tea glass that is FDA approved. For you know, it can be used for food utensils and um, and containers, and so it's okay to you put it in your mouth. And and for those who are not familiar with the test, this T glass shapes for the oral discrimination goes in a in a you know in the in the cap for for a bottle, and you have decided that the kid put the shape in your mouth and try to figure out what what shape is it and point to the training and then the process is so easy you just go to website download the STL files find uh, a printer and just organize